from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Think 2018. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live in sunny Las Vegas at the inaugural IBM Think 2018 event. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Dave, this weather has got to be Boston hands down, right? Well, it was beautiful yesterday, about 15 degrees in Boston, snowy. <laughs> So you thought out since you got in here. I took the snowshoes out, actually. You know, <laughs> life makes lemons. <laughs> exactly, and we have another cold weather guest who's probably right. thawing out as well, Ranjana Young, the Senior Vice President of Enterprise Data Services from Northern Trust, welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. We're excited to chat with you. You have a role at Northern Trust and your mission is all around data. Five core competencies, including data governance and stewardship, data quality, master data management, enterprise integration with data platforms. Tell us a little bit about your role, how long you've been doing that, and really what this focus on data is enabling for Northern Trust. Sure, um, I want to talk first about our mission as, as you had mentioned. I think it was critical to establish a, a broad mission um, uh, for Northern Trust. We, we wanted to make sure that we are establishing an enterprise data uh, program that enabled um, and, and uh, our customer needs uh, and overall our customer experience, but also um, truly you know, help support our regulatory needs that we had. Um, and, and it was critical to establish those two as the main goals, not, not just one or the other. Um, and then the role, you know, I, I call myself a change agent um, because establishing uh, capabilities that you talked about, it's, it is difficult to do in a, in a, you know, with, with a lot of legacy that we have. The firm has been uh, in existence for 128 years. There's, um, to establish a data-driven culture was very different. I mean, I think we were known to, to you know, um, do really good, you know, provide good business solutions, but a um, lot with the gut, uh, given that, that, that we were good at it, but uh, how do you make sure that you change that culture and have, uh, you know, our relationship managers and others really think differently and use data uh, uh, to provide those solutions uh, to our clients. I, I remember when I met Inderpal Bhandari, from, I'm sure you know him, and, yeah. and he, he said that he has a framework for mm -hmm. a data leader, and he said mm -hmm. there are five things a data leader has to do to get started, and these three are in parallel, or sorry, three mm -hmm. are linear, two are in parallel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard this rap, but I'd like to sort of <laughs> explore them and see how your three years sure. doing. He said you start with understanding how the organization monetizes mm -hmm. data, not directly maybe selling data, but how mm -hmm. it contributes. And then mm -hmm. the next one was sort of data access and then data quality. Mm -hmm. Those are the sort of sequential activities. Mm -hmm. And then the parallel ones were form relationships with the line of business mm -hmm. and then reskill. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So those are his five. How did you approach it? What was different? What were similar? What were some of the, the challenges that you had? In sure. Um, if you, if I had to think about kind of, um, to correlate some of the components of the strategy. Um, skills is an important um, important thing. We, um, when I started establishing the team uh, three years ago, it was critical that you had to uh, bring some of the core uh, skills within the firm because they had the business capabilities, they understood the systems, they understood kind of the skeletons that were uh, were there in the closets yeah. and we, they, we knew and knew the culture and also embraced the, the, the challenges and still could find solutions. Um, and then you had to bring external folks that really had uh, the capability to drive that change, had you know had the master data management skills to really support and set up an account domain and you know a party domain. A, 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 a reference data domain, especially an asset domain, et cetera. So we had, we had to look at kind of a conglomerate of individuals to do that. Um, and then if you look at kind of where was the starting point in terms of really establishing uh, the program was we had to, you know, we had a, we were going through a transformation uh, to really re-platform a lot of our legacy, um, um, whether it was our valuation system or our cash platform, others, and data was a threat throughout, uh, throughout all of those, those, those programs. So it was critical to establish and think and take bite-sized chunks. So it was important to think about, okay, if, you know, throughout all the programs, what is the important data that we could 
we could kind of understand. So we, we focused quite a bit on initially uh, looking at critical data and looking at critical data from a master data perspective. So asset data, which is very critical to the work that we do on the institutional side. As you know, we are an asset management, asset servicing company. Uh, data is an asset for us. We, you know, we enrich the data. Um, we provide services um, uh, around that today and have been. Um, and so embedding data governance uh, through that process um, was important and also um, our clients were really looking for the enriched data, but also we're looking for clean uh, information, but also we're looking um, for, you know, where did that data come from? How are you, how have you, how have you actually, what is the definition of this data? So kind of giving them that external catalog of, hey, here's the data, but here's the enriched data, here's the metrics for, for, for data quality around it, and then here's the definitions for it. So to some extent, uh, you know, uh, th that drove change uh, mm. because our customers were looking for it, and you know uh, a lot of the capabilities that were foundational to the firm, uh, we're, we're starting to externalize, uh, especially the metadata catalog. Et so if I could play that back, so you started sure. with the team, right? You said, okay, I need to build a team. That's what you, you, I think I heard that, and then the data quality, and then presumably, okay, who has access to this data? Is that? About right so I, I started with the mission to say we have to do this for both arms. The left arm being our customer experience and making sure that we mm. change the way we're doing our work there, um, or, or enhance the work, you know, the, the, so that our customer experience was better. And then, you know, obviously the regulatory, make sure that we need the regulatory. So for that. I needed five core. We needed five core competencies. We knew that we had to establish a role of a steward, a role of a custodian, a role of a. So the team started to become very critical then, um, and then we knew that we had some uh, gaps in our master data management capability, uh, a complete gap in having an integrated data platform. So I know Seth talked a little bit about how he established a whole strategy and architecture for the for the for ING. I, I totally relate to to how we had to do that the, the same. We each silo yeah. did their own particular thing. Wealth management did their own My thing. Data. The institutional side did their own thing. Ask management was a lot more um, I would say a lot more mature. So I would say if you were to think about it it's you know, establishing the mission and establishing the team. And then, just one last follow-up, the services that you're providing, yeah. data services, yeah. those are delivered through your organization, the IT organization, what's the partnership? Oh, we have, a, we have a partnership, um, um, and a very collaborative partnership that we work together. Um, um, the technology team does all the build uh, for the work. We, we work collaboratively to kind of build the strategy of what solutions need to be First versus later, um, given the client priorities and our our, our, our institutional side, yep. our, our business unit priorities. So that's you know we so it's a it's a collaborative effort working right. together. So speaking of collaboration, you mentioned earlier that it was really key to have both the veterans with the Northern Trust and their expertise that you said kind of yeah. the skeletons that they know mm -hmm. where things are buried, as well as that maybe external you might say more fresh perspective. You also talked about, um, or we chatted before we went on, on live, about governance. Mm -hmm. Seems like what you guys have done is kind of flipped governance from and it being viewed as potentially an inhibitor to really empowering, being an empowering um, capability. Can you tell us how you've leveraged data governance to empower a data-driven culture within uh, a business that is 128, I think, years old, yeah, you said? Yeah, that's right. So for us, um, I think that while we were establishing the pro program, it was very critical uh, to understand kind of the challenges on the institutional side first, uh, because they, were the, they had the maximum number of challenges with data. Um, as again, I'll, you know, because we're an asset servicing company, our data is an asset. We, we, we enrich that information and provide that information, but what was happening is it was taking us so much longer to provide these solutions that we were, you know, to to our clients. If you know, so 
we've embedded now the data governance framework as a part of that solution, uh, you know, and, and, and our clients are seeing the value. So if you, if you, if you provide the, this, you know, if, if you look at one of the customers that we're working with, we actually have externalized our, our, our catalog where they understand now what data that they're receiving, and we, we, you know, it's, it, it, you're speaking the same language, and that was not the case uh, before. Um, but again, as I said, if, you know, if we didn't do the foundational work of cataloging the information, understanding what the data is, where the data is, how, what the data assets are, we just couldn't have done, it couldn't have done that. So it's really paying off because of, uh, because of that. So how, how has that affected your ability to be prepared for GDPR? GDPR obviously went into effect last year, the fines mm -hmm. go into effect mm -hmm. in May of, of this year. What was their relationship there? So we have worked very, very closely with our chief privacy officer um, and, and we've really done a phenomenal job of identifying where our highly sensitive data assets are. We've cattle, you know, we're in the process of cataloging um, all of them through the, the, the data unified governance framework that we've established. Uh, so we leverage IBM's IGC and IA to do to all that work, so, uh, and, and the lineage all the way to the authentic source, which is uh, something the regulators definitely are, 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 are looking for. So uh, are we fully, completely done yet? No, so we're in that journey, and, and we, you know, and then with unstructured data, we've, we're looking at discovery tools to kind of provide that. We, we have a, a solution that's a little manual at this point, but we, we you know, hope to kind of make more, more progress on that, on, the, on that side. I got to ask you, so about around 17% of the data suggests, 17% of the IT technology industry is women. But I was at an IBM, <laughs> uh, it was a Data Divas breakfast that I crashed, I snuck oh, in. Oh, very cool. One of the few guys there. And, and there was a stat that around 30% of data leaders are, mm -hmm. are women. I, I don't know, mm. it was a sort of a small sample, who knows? <laughs> Sound a little high. Somebody said it's yes. because it's a thankless job and women <laughs> have to take it on. So, uh, thoughts on, you know, Women in tech, women in this role. Um, so I, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, meet a few here uh, mm -hmm. at the conference. Uh, that statistic is is pretty high. That you're stating, I don't see that. Sounds high. Yeah. Um, in the industry, I do find myself uh, sometimes as a lone warrior, at least in the industry forums. Uh, but I think it's growing. I think, um, especially uh, women in technology, women in uh, leadership on the you know line of business side is growing and, and so is, and, and Northern Trust, I'm very proud to say, is big around diversity and, and providing cap, you know, um, uh, opportunities to women. So uh, from that perspective, I think uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited that, that women are taking interest in data. Yes, it is a very hard job, so I think, um, I, think you know, I feel like we are organized, we get a lot done at the same time, so I well, think that's other really than, Other than it's the right thing to do, right. are there other, sort of business dimensions, is it Mars versus Venus? Are there other <laughs> sort of uh, you know, enrichments that a, a woman leader brings to the equation? Or is it just because it's the right thing to do? Um, I think it's, some, I have seen tenacity. Women have, you know, no offense to, <laughs> to, to any, I think I've, I, the higher tenacity to, to be persistent, yeah, uh, to, be methodical, yeah. <laughs> to be methodical, to be methodical, and also uh, to why the, to have the hard hard discussions in a very um, you know factual way sometimes, but also in you know yes this is the right thing to do, but is there ways we could you know make this this change happen in, in you know um, in a systematic bite sized chunk way? Um, sometimes I think those coercive conversations uh, help. A lot more than um, than the others. I think, and I, and I think it's to, to me. I, I would say tenacity. Tenacity. Is I love that word. Yeah. I, mean, I have to say that's kind <laughs> of a, that's a word that's oftentimes associated with with males. A yeah. lot of times, a tenacious woman. It's it's you know different adjective or different right. That's it's right. A term. That's I don't right. know, Lisa, what yeah. your experience has been, but so that's good. A good choice that's of words. Right. In my view. I've heard pushy before, and I think what go. they really okay. meant is well, persistent. Right. Yeah, a man right. is tenacious, a woman <laughs> is pushy. That's, yeah. that's right. right. You hear that a lot. Right. But, right. I think right. it's persistent. So, last question for you. We here we are at the inaugural um, IBM Think 2018. You guys are an IBM Analytics Global Elite Partner. Can you talk to us a little bit about that strategic partnership and what it means for Northern Trust? Oh, we have, uh, this partnership has really helped us tremendously in the last three years while we were putting the strategy to action while operationalizing 
data governance while operationalizing a lot of the capabilities we thought we would have, but really kind of make, you know bringing that to, to life. Um, we're also really excited because a lot of the feedback that we've provided has gone into kind of redoing some of the product um, um, products uh, within IBM. Uh, so we've, we've been we've definitely partnered and done a lot of testing for some of the non G you know the ones that uh, you know the beta uh, uh, versions, uh, and it's also helped us. You know I think. Uh, sometimes it's been it's been like a marriage. <laughs> We've had hard times uh, getting through certain hurdles, but it it really has really paid 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 off. And I think um, the other thing is we've really operationalized governance to the to the core at Northern Trust. I think IBM is also seeing value in sharing that our story uh, with others because others have started uh, started the journey, but then may have taken certain different approaches to, to making that happen. So um, all in all, I think that the unified, unified governance framework has really helped us, and I think we, we really uh, love the partnership. As a, as a client, what's on their to-do list? What's on IBM's to-do list for you? So I think one of the things that uh, you know we've been talking quite a bit is I, I we have a new CIO and he's really interested in, in the cloud strategy. I know you've been talking sure. about that. We've we be, again we're a bank, so you know due to regulation, there's uh, you know uh, strategies in terms of private versus pub public cloud. Like that's one conversation we'll definitely want to take further. Uh, we want more integrated tooling within the unified governance. Uh, platform. That's something that's been on the, you know, a, a topic that we've discussed quite a bit with them. Uh, AI, machine learning, robotics is huge for us. So how do we leverage Watson more, mo much more? We've done a few POCs. Um, how do we really operationalize and make sure that that's something that we do more of? So I think I would say those three. Right. So it sounds like a very symbiotic relationship <laughs> it is. slash marriage that you have. Yes. Well, Ranjana, we want to thank you for, for joining us and sharing how you really kind of you're exhibiting the term change agent in a tenacious way. Okay. I feel like I want to say I'm flanked between two data divas. You don't take offense at that, do you? No, not at all. No, you crashed a data. Yeah. You crashed a data, and I'm like, That's right. I'm seeing, I'm like seeing a new Twitter handle come up. Here. <laughs> well, we want to thank you so much again Thanks for again. stopping by and sharing. Congrats on your success, and we hope you have a great time here. Enjoy the sunshine. Will Maybe do. bring some back Will to do. Chicago. Will do, yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> thank and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. We want to encourage you to check out thecube.net to watch all of the videos that we have done so far and will be doing at IBM Think 2018. And of course, on all of the shows that we do. Also, head over to siliconangle.com. That's our media site where you're going to find pretty much in near real time um, synopsis and stories on not just what we're doing here, but everything around the globe. Uh, again, for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin, live from IBM Think 2018 in Vegas. We'll be right back after a short break with our next guest. <laughs>